What is up everyone? Today we're going to quickly give an update on the sports card consigner, potentially scammer that sports card radio called out in their live the other day. I've had a few people, one of which is very, very influential within the hobby, reach out to me with some information. They are somebody that is potentially or, you know, allegedly scammed by this individual. They don't want to be named, but they are very, very, you know, popular. Chances are if you're in the hobby, you know who they are. I just can't name their name. Now, this information came to me before the Sports Card Radio video, and I had conversations with Sports Card Radio in the background. The reason why I held off on this was I was waiting on additional information to come through. It still hasn't come through yet, but there are some things I can talk to in this video that you are all probably not aware of. By the time you're seeing this, you would have likely have seen a follow-up from Sports Card Radio on this. Now, if you're not sure what I'm talking about, it's in relation to this live stream over here. I accidentally just clicked it. With regard to this dude, Richard Zangrilla, I'll let this play so you can sort of see what his face looks like. But he essentially started a consignment business and took a number of cards from individuals. It's been about six months since he took these individuals' cards. They've been trying to get them back. They can't get them back. Now, Sports Card Radio played a little bit of nice cop with this dude just to try and get some information out of him as they explain in this video. They're trying to get a you know an appropriate resolution for everyone so they're not whacking the stick at this guy just yet. They want to get all the facts. This guy basically says, or Richard, I should say, um, that he wants to get the cards back to people. He's been working as hard as he can. He's got so many cards of his own that it's all, you know, it's all mixed up and he can't really get it. But it's been six months, so lots of question marks are around this story. Now, to give you some information from my source, like I just said, he was a friend of a number of people. There's about 20 people that have been, you know, scammed or in, stuck in basically this consignment, you know, mess. Um, he was a friend of them. He didn't work at Tops. He'd already started the consignment business beforehand. He applied for the job at Tops, got the job, and according to Richard Zangrillo, Tops asked him to you know cancel the consignment business. He then moved, you know, from New York to Dallas to take up the role, and that's where these guys think these issues, you know, stem. They don't think he was out to get them from the get-go, but they've basically said this guy appears to be, you know. A perennial liar he's lying about a lot of different things they've tried to meet up with him multiple different times and he's always got an excuse so this kind of story from you know him to sports card radio seems a bit strange they've basically not been seen since they gave them to him and sports card radio were trying to quantify they didn't really know the number of cards it's a, i forget the number i think it's like six to ten thousand cards they estimated around thirty five thousand, maybe more maybe well over 100k uh, talking to my source, I can confirm it's upwards of $75,000 USD. It might even be over a hundred grand of cards that this guy owns. Um, the inside gut, I guess all the gut feeling that these guys have that have been scammed, and remember this includes a very influential person that you would have seen a lot of in the last week, has basically said, well, I think he's probably sold the cards, you know, and he used the term cents on the dollar. So they don't have, you know, a whole lot of hope with trying to get this. They've tried to meet up with the guy you know, multiple times they've tried contacting him individually, as has he to them. Um, and they've basically tried to meet him at, you know, the Dallas Card Show and a few other things. And he's always got an excuse for why he can't meet up. When you're looking at, you know, these scams that happen, you know, across the board, they typically all share similar, you know, sentiment, i.e. the scam has always got an excuse for why he can't, you know, follow through on something. They've always got a reason that is bigger than themselves that they tell the people that are trying to get their money back or their cards back for why he can't you know follow through on the situation i think it's um pretty alarming obviously it's all you know alleged at this stage we don't really have the details um there's a few people that i was waiting on information from that i strongly believe is going to have a conversation with sports card radio so again you might see that before this video but these people have you know instagram messages text messages phone call like logs they've got um, sales sheets, all the detail around the number of cards that were missing. So this is not something that's sort of like he said, she said. There's got a, you know, a very, you know, valid and, and you know, thick uh, trail. I want to say to to get to the bottom of this. It's not paper thin. Is the is the point I'm trying to make? Sometimes I say dumb words. Forgive me, guys. Um, like I said, they think he's dumped these cards, but there's a lot of guys that are very prominent within the hobby. Some of these cards weren't expensive. Expensive. Some of these were. They trusted an individual, as is the case with so many of these scams within the hobby over the last few years, and they've been, you know, burned essentially, which is really disappointing to see. Again, I'll name the names when I can. We'll see if Sports Card Radio um, have the opportunity to do that. As of right now, they've gone back and forth on whether or not they feel comfortable. Um, I don't want to, you know, burn that bridge. I don't want to do anything to upset anyone. So I'm going to, you know, respect their, you know, request in that sense. So. Let me know what your thoughts are. Let me know if you know anyone that's been scammed by this guy, if you know any information about him. Again, it's all alleged, but, you know, 
all the things are sort of falling into place with this one. I'm, I'm very curious to see what sports card radio can get out of him, whether they can get him to try and, you know, push through on this and try and make, you know, uh, a refund or try and get the cards back in the hands of these people, which would be really interesting because, like I said, these guys that have been, you know, scammed by this dude or allegedly scammed, I should say, um, think that he's, you know, lost the cards or sold the cards a long time ago. So it's interesting what cards he's actually going to try and get back in the hands of these guys or whether or not he can afford to give them, you know, a refund. I think, you know, the general tone from the guys that reach out to me is that this guy was quite methodical with his approach to reaching out to them. There's some wording around him, you know, allegedly reaching out to these guys at different points in order to try and, you know, substantiate a story or corroborate a story for him. Meanwhile, he was sort of playing everyone at the same time. These guys sort of, and when I say these guys, I mean the alleged, you know, victims, I should say, um, caught onto this pretty quickly and are communicating with each other. There's one individual, like I have alluded to multiple times now, that has a lot of information. He's very, very annoyed, as most of them are, because they've lost a lot of money. But this guy is not afraid to hold back. He's willing to go on the record. He's willing to do a live with me. But unfortunately, I'm going on vacation um, the day after recording this. So you're going to see this on Friday, Australian time. I'm going on vacation Wednesday morning. Um, so I couldn't unfortunately do that, but I, I think Sports Card Radio will. I just wanted to try and get all these facts to you um, to give you a bit more context on the situation. And if you know nothing transpires between now and when I'm back, I'm going to jump on a live with this guy and and go through the whole situation and get him to outline everything that he believes happened, along with you know some of the proof that he has. I think these scams or this scam, if it is a scam, is so has so many parallels to all the things we've complained about you know, over the last two to three years. There are individuals out there that are, you know, relying on the relationship, relying on the trust they've got with their friends, with their followers, with their subscribers, so on and so forth, to try and manipulate the process. Like these guys also explained to me, they're not sure if he had, you know, the, the wrong intentions from the very get-go. But sometimes the temptation is too high. It goes to what I said about Bill Mastro yesterday in that, you know, Probs in Auctions video. The, the Mastro knowing what the max bids were for each of those auctions was just way too tempting for him. He he couldn't help but, you know, manipulate the process. Now, that's not a excuse in any way, shape, or form. You still have to be, you know, a very bad person or maybe not be of, you know, strong ethics to do that thing in the first place because it is, you know, scumbag behavior in my opinion. But some of these people in the hobby that have been given platforms and opportunities to sort of lead and, and take ownership of things and get exposed to a lot of money or a lot of cards that maybe don't have the best intentions in mind, wouldn't have been exposed to these things anywhere, in any other life, right? And they get to these positions and all of a sudden the temptation is too much because they've either not come from a, a well-off background or anything like that and they've panicked or something along those lines. And again, it's not meant to let them off lightly in any way, shape or form. I, I think if this was true, it is scumbag behavior, as is the case with all these other scams we've seen over the number of months. So I'm very keen to see what sports card radio can, you know, shake from the, from this guy, basically shake the tree to see what falls out. So hopefully these guys can get their money back because, you know, six to 10,000 cards, $100,000 is a lot of money. Nobody should go through losing that kind of thing, whether you like the person, you know, or not. So as always, thank you for watching. Please share your thoughts down in the comments below and I will see you in the next one. Cheers.